you've been a long believer in the India story, but there have been many who have questioned your decision to get into Indian aviation because it's a space where many dreams have taken off, but many dreams have also been grounded. Uh, so on the back of the fact that now you actually have an airline that has taken flight, how confident do you feel about the India aviation story? Hello? Hello? Mr. Ginger, Mr. Gingerwala, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. yeah, I can. Well, I feel very, very yeah, confident I was, I... about the Indian aviation story. I feel very confident and comfortable. And I feel Akasa will be a very competitive airline. We are not a low cost airline, we are a frugal airline. So you're saying you're not a low cost airline, you're a frugal airline. I had the uh, opportunity to sit down with your team at Akasa, Vinay Dube, Aditya Ghosha. Uh, and they were very clear that they are not going to try and disrupt this space on the back of price. They are going to try and bring in disruptions on the back of customer experience and uh, enhancing efficiencies across uh, the value chain of the airline. Uh, to your point about this being a frugal airline, not necessarily just a low-cost airline, I want to understand from you uh, what you believe is going to be uh, the disruption that Akasa brings to the table and more importantly, what kind of uh, growth potential do you see for the airline and Indian aviation from here on? Well, we... Hello? Yes, Mr. Jinjirala, go ahead. Well, we already brought change in the uh, you know, aviation business. You know, our competitors are our ordering new chairs in response to the chairs in our flights. And I think, see, you know, India is reach that per capita expenditure, but discretionary expenditure will go up. And therefore, there will be a lot more flying. And then the Honorable Minister for Civil Aviation has predicted that in four years, we'll have 40, we'll go from 14 crore passengers flying a year to 40 crore passengers. You know what that means? That we need about two and a half times the planes that we have today. Hello? Yes, so you're basically saying that we will need a lot more aircraft in the sky to be able to uh, capitalize on the growth in the aviation traffic that uh, is being estimated. Of course, India today, uh, the third largest uh, civil aviation commercial uh, market. But Mr. Junjunwala, you know, you've already uh, uh, placed strategic bets on the aviation sector, on the insurance sector as well. What else are you looking at strategically? Where else could you perhaps uh, put in a strategic uh, uh, bid uh, you know, that you could back strategically. Any other sectors that interest you from a strategic point of view? Public sector banks, public sector banks, and public sector banks. Is what I'm very bullish on. And what's the hypothesis for betting so big on public sector banks? You said you're very bullish on public sector banks. 
Uh, what's the hypothesis there that's driving your confidence? Pardon? What is the hypothesis that's driving the confidence in public sector banks for you? Why, why do you feel so bullish on public sector banks today? I think because credit demand will go up and as a consequence, the pricing power of banks will go up. And two things is they are very well provided. I mean, I think they will they will write back, uh, you know, instead of provisions. So two reasons I'm very worried. As the credit growth gives them pricing power, and they, they are very well provided. Okay, so credit growth you're very bullish on and that you believe is going to ensure that public sector banks do well. Uh, that's a space that you're bullish on. Outside of that, you know, since we are talking no. about uh, India in the context no, of India at 75, uh, Mr. Junjunwala. Yeah, go ahead. Shireen, those who can borrow are those who can lend. And they have great public credit banks are great gathering power, great power of gathering deposits. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right in pointing that out. You know, we're talking about uh, India in the context of India at 75, and uh, just some data that we've been looking at. In 1947, Indian GDP at 2.7 lakh crores. Today, in 2022, 197.5 lakh crores. If we talk about forex reserves in 1947 at 3 billion dollars, today at 2022 at 574 billion dollars. We talk about India's market cap, of course we can't go all the way back to 1947, but if you just convert uh, 1988 to 2022, 23.6 billion dollars in 1988 in terms of the India market cap versus 3,437 billion dollars in 2022. I'm also looking at some of the big business uh, uh, conglomerates, big business companies that have survived the last 75 years. Uh, companies that were born before 1947. Indian hotels, Tata Steel, ITC, Britannia, Tata Power, uh, Berger Paints, Bata, HUL. There's many more uh, there. Which of the companies that you believe have the power, the potential, the opportunity to be able to uh, continue to accelerate on growth over the next few decades? Well, I think India is going to enter a golden period. And, you know, I see India growing at 10%. So given the fact that you believe India is going to grow at 10%, uh, you talked about public sector banks as being one space that you are bullish on. Which are the other, perhaps the consumer-facing sectors, uh, where else do you believe opportunities will lie? Where else do you believe that we could see, uh, you know, the kind of growth that you anticipate that could take us to double digits? I'm very... I'm very bullish on the hospital space also. Public sector banks and hospitals. Right. Uh, so let let me understand from you. Uh, you know, as as you look at the various themes that are playing out today, and digitization is the big theme uh, that has. Uh, given fresh uh, wings to many companies, to many sectors in India today, the digitization bet is playing out across different sectors. Uh, how confident do you feel about that and its transformative powers? And in what ways would you perhaps back the digitization theme?
when I think the resilient thing is playing out and as time progresses it will further play out and I must you know thank Mr. Mukesh Ambani for the change he has brought about in India because you know the low cost of uh, the communication whether in voice or in data as is what is cost digitization in this country and we cannot thank Mr. Ambani more for the beautiful you know for the low cost he has bought to digitalization and you know to either voice and communication both of it. I think this country has to remain eternally grateful to Mr. Ambani for what he has done to the telecommunication sector. Because that is what has enabled digitalization in this country. Right. So that's, that's not a sector that you're going to be considering. But I want to ask you about what you make of where the markets are poised today, Mr. Junjunwala. Uh, we've seen the Fed hike rates. The expectation is that we'll see the Fed hike rates even further. We've just seen a 50 basis point hike coming in from the MPC. Uh, the global environment continues to be challenging. Uh, how do you see all of this impacting our markets, the domestic equity markets in the short term? What's your outlook for the markets in the short term? I think... Mr. Junjunwala, thoughts on the markets in the short well, term? I think mark... I think... I think markets will go up, but, you know, at a slower pace. Regardless of global developments, I think Indian markets will gain, but they will gain at a slower pace.